Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Creating Wealth. And as always, we have our mentor, our teacher, Robert Allen. Thank you for coming today. Thank you, Marjorie. <laughs> and today we're going to talk about one of the super creative nothing down techniques, which is the ultimate paper out. So tell us, how does that work? When people think of nothing down, mm -hmm. how to buy real estate with little or no money down, which is the title of my book, Nothing Down. When they think of that, they think of the ultimate paper out. U ultimate paper out is where a seller doesn't need a down payment, doesn't want a down payment, doesn't, is okay with them if you come in with no money out of your own pocket to buy that property. Now, how often does that happen? Very, very rarely. That's why people misunderstand the concept of nothing down. Mm -hmm. They think it means an ultimate paper out. A paper meaning you're going to give paper for your down payment. Mm -hmm. Paper is a fancy way of saying a mortgage. Gotcha. A first mortgage, a second mortgage, a third mortgage, a fourth mortgage. In other words, a mortgage is just a piece of paper that collateralizes the house or the property you're buying and a note, a note say, I'll pay you X amount of money over X amount of time at X amount of interest rate. That's the paper, that's the note. But in order to secure my note, my word, I'm gonna give you this property. Mm -hmm. And in most states of the United States, the property is the sole collateral. In California, for example, it is. Mm -hmm. If you give the property back, <clears throat> that's it. That's the only collateral. Mm -hmm. In other states, it's not the case. And if you give the property back and that property is sold for less than what your paper, your note said you owed, sometimes they can come after you for the deficiency. They call it a deficiency judgment. So you gotta be careful which state you live in. The, the, the bottom line is uh, an ultimate paper out is where the seller for whatever reason doesn't need your down payment. So let me take, let's take two kinds of scenarios. Yeah. One scenario is the property, let's, let's make a, a number up. Let's pick a property that's worth, let's, let's say $400,000. Mm -hmm. And let's say that the seller has a $300,000 mortgage against it. Now you're gonna have to refinance that if you buy it, you have to put $100,000 down. Mm -hmm. Unless you use some very interesting techniques for you to buy the property in a trust so that the the mortgage doesn't have to be refinanced. Yes, most mortgages have a due on sale clause, mm -hmm. meaning if you sell it to somebody else, the mortgage is due on the sale of the property to somebody else. Therefore, mm -hmm. the bank wants their money back because right. they don't know you, the new buyer. They didn't qualify you. They mm -hmm. want their money back so they can give it to somebody else. But there are ways and they're way deeper than what we have to go in here today. But just let me just put it this way, there is a way for you to put it into a trust in such a way that you don't have to notify the bank that the property has actually changed hands. Mm. So they don't know. And if they did, it didn't matter anyway, because it's been through the courts, they can't, they can't sue you, they can't force the sale. Oh, wow. So you now are able to take over the mortgage without getting a new mortgage, it's always the existing one that was in place, but now you got a $100,000 problem. I got a $100,000 down payment I gotta, I gotta worry about. Well, what if the seller doesn't need $100,000? What if you could show the seller that, that you have some asset besides 100,000 that they could take in in lieu of 100,000 in cash? What if you gave them a $110,000 second mortgage? You actually sold it for more than what they wanted. And you gave them a higher interest rate that they could get at the bank. Right? Interest rates, you know, they fluctuate, obviously, all the way, from, all the way down to 2 or 3% to up to 10%. But, you know, whatever the market is bearing at that time, you offer a percent higher than what the, the, that the banks could pay you, could right. pay the seller. You say to the seller, listen, you put your money in the bank, what's it, 1%, 2%? Mm -hmm. You give your money to government, a government bond, what is it, 2 3 4 5, 4%? Um, why don't I give you 5%? I'll give you 5%. I might give you 6%. I, That's a way better deal. I, I want to get into the property with no money down. Therefore, I'm going to pay more. I'm, I, I need you to be flexible in one of two areas. Either you're flexible 
in the down payment and the way in which you receive it, or you're flexible in the price of the property. Therefore, if we lower the property price from 400 to 450, so if I put 50,000 bucks in, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna make money the day I buy this property. As soon as it becomes mine, it's undervalued. It's, it, I bought it below the market. Mm -hmm. So if you want, it's either price or terms. Which one do you want, Mr. Seller, Mrs. Seller? If you want price, then I'll give you cash, but you gotta give me price. That's right. You know? If you'll give me terms, I'll give you your price. I'll give you your market price, whatever you're asking for. But I have to have the right kind of terms. So that's if a property is mortgaged. Mm -hmm. And therefore, that's how you're looking for a seller with a mortgage property where they'll accept as a down payment paper. That's what we mean by papering out. Mm -hmm. You paper out with a mortgage, which is a note and a collateral agreement. Therefore... I'm looking for a highly motivated seller. And there are more and more and more every single day. As interest rates go up, more and more highly motivated seller. So I'm just looking for a couple of those all across the United States. Are there, I don't know how many properties are listed today for sale. Today, brand new properties come on the market today. Mm -hmm. I'm just making a guess. I have no idea what, if this is true or not. 50,000 properties today. Today. Okay, 20,000 maybe. Still, it's a huge, it's thousands. How many of those do you need to find? Nationwide, one, one. You can do this, one. And therefore I'm looking for a seller who has the, the right kinds of circumstances where they don't need the cash. Maybe they don't want the cash because if they take the cash and there's profit in there for them, they have to pay taxes on it. That's right. Don't want to pay taxes. See, if you sell it to me with little or no money down, the taxes are only get paid every time I make you a monthly payment. And it's just small monthly payments. A little bit of taxes every month. It's not a big deal. But if you take all your cash, got taxes. Don't want to do that. So I'm looking for circumstances where the seller might want. They're not desperate. They're not going through a bankruptcy. They're not losing their property for foreclosure. They might want your nothing down deal. Mm -hmm. Or of course, they might need your nothing down deal, depending on if they're having a problem. So whether they want it or whether they need it, you're looking for that person. And only 1% of them are like that. So let's take nationwide. I, I mentioned a number, 20,000. I don't know if that's true. But what if it was? What's 1% of 20,000? That's 200. That means today in America, in the right neighborhood, there are 200 properties that are going to be listed. Uh, some seller has a, made a decision to sell. How many of those do I need? I need one. To, what if I can't find one today? Well, how, do I need, need, how many of the 200 tomorrow am I going to need? One. And the 200 after that, one. In other words, eventually, I'm going to find one out of the thousands that might become available over a period of time, 90 days. 90 days will probably be you know, 100,000 properties come on the market. 100,000. 1% is 1,000. Can you find a deal for you somewhere in the United States? Absolutely. One in 1,000? Yes, you can. I'm just trying to make this so, so, so obvious to you. You go, duh, I can do this. I can figure this out. So the other opportunity is for those people who have a free and clear house, 40% of the properties in the marketplaces today whether they're on the market or off the market, are free and clear, no mortgages. Well, if they refinance it, uh, if the, if, let's put it this way, if the seller has been sitting on this property for 25 years and it's gone up five times in value and they haven't refinanced it, there's an enormous profit sitting in there. Yeah, it'll be capital gains, but still, there'll be taxes. And if you cash it all out, Big cash tax, tax bill you're going to have to pay. You could say to the seller, don't you just want cash flow? You, you know, if, if, see, I'll make you a monthly payment. If it's a $400,000 house, 7%, you know, figure that one out. What's the monthly payment going to be on that? Not that much, really. And yet it's enough for that person who owned the home to probably retire. That's right. For them to kind of, kind of with their social security and 
the sale of their house with all that cash flow coming in from the from the mortgages that you're you're making the monthly payments on, hey, this is maybe all they really wanted. They really didn't know what to do with four hundred thousand dollars. You know, <laughs> what right. am I going to do with it? I, I stick it in the bank. I don't know. I got to well, you got to pay a chunk of that in taxes. So they don't what want if you that. what if you just left it in the house? Mm -hmm. You know. So in other words, there are ways. We have ways to find opportunities <laughs> to solve people's problems without cash. This is what we do as creative real estate investors, yes. That's we right. We find ways to do this. And if anything, like, and there's so many people that are getting into sale and becoming don't wanters just because they ended up getting a house that they thought, oh, yeah, I really wanted this house, but now they don't even make enough money as to actually pay the yeah, mortgage right, every right, month. Right. So those are don't wanters that are increasing. Sure. And in the case of um, all the houses that are already free, free and clear, there's a lot of people that are trying to get retired and they just want to move to a better place. They don't want to keep that same house. So that's also two big opportunities that you see right there. Yep. Two so big that populations that you see. is what we call the ultimate paper out. It is technique number one of 50 techniques. Mm -hmm. The other 49 techniques are coming in the next episode. Uh, they are, e <laughs> they are not, I won't say they're easier, mm -hmm. uh, but I'll say that Using all 50 of them, you can find a way to That's buy right. a property with little or none, none of your own money. And if anything, you can even combine those techniques and become the best invest investor out there. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much again, Robert. Such a pleasure always to learn about these new techniques that we can use and new populations that we could target for finding the deals that we need. And to our audience, we're going to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.